strangers, internet. My name is Emily Hanahan. I love colorful makeup and colorful language. But I'm here today with, uh, you know what, it's, it's a review. I was going to say it's something a little different, but we're doing some makeup reviews. I want to shout out my dear friend Audra at home for inspiring me to just do some dang reviews. And probably the inspiration is even more so because these are complexion reviews. Yes, yes, we're going to be applying two complexion products from Dior, as you probably see in the title of the video, the Dior Forever Skin Correct Concealer in 2WO and the Dior Backstage Face and Body Powder No Powder. I have had these for about three weeks-ish, I think, um, but I've been using them pretty regularly and I am a whore for concealers. So a lot of times my thoughts come together after a pretty quick amount of time. So I thought I would go in and apply these to my face, give you my thoughts as we are talking about them and uh, do a little review. It feels kind of odd for me, but what am I talking about? I do reviews. I just... Imposter syndrome, yeah. If you like colorful makeup, if you like bitches with lots of opinions, or you just like cute fat babes in general, I hope you will subscribe. And let's jump into this application review video. Now, I don't always get super close up for my videos, but I'm trying to give you as much detail as possible. So I am going to do something that might be a little bit controversial, but one of my absolute favorite base products is the Auric Glow Lust. Now I have skincare all over my face. I've done that a little while ago. So it's just pretty like natural feeling a little, little bit of tact, but not a lot. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this on half of my face. I just want to show it to you in action because this is how I like applying makeup. This is how I like wearing bases, but you're also going to see the other half of my face without it, with just the skincare concealer and powder. But I just wanted to clarify in case it feels, you know, a little, a little controversial or scandalous. This is truly like one of my favorite products. I, I really like uh, what it does to my skin the glow, the little bit of, of coverage color. This is Morganite, the newer one. They revamped it after the initial launch. And I do like bringing it under my eye because it adds some light reflection that I find very helpful for the shape of my face. I might have pumped out just a tiny bit too much. It's a little, you know, that's one of the things is that actually using this product has made me uh, a little bit more interested in powders because it is just the tiniest bit tacky in a way that I don't always love. It's not a deal breaker for me in this product, but it is something that if I can correct, I will. I have a variety of tools in front of me to use for this review. Uh, we have a dampened Shop Miss A sponge. I also have my favorite concealer brush, the Zoeva 146. And I also have nice short nails, so I'm going to be using my fingers as well. And then for powder, I also have the sponge. And then I have a natural hair refer brush and a synthetic hair brush. This is the blush brush from Midas. The brush is currently still in stock, but Midas is closing if you're interested, perhaps. So I'm gonna use concealer first. Uh, this color is definitely too dark for me, but it is, in my opinion, a nice undertone and this is the way I like to play with concealer on most days. Glowy base concealer over the areas that I want it. And then nowadays, a little powder. These are usually the areas that I put the concealer down under my nose, under my mouth, my eye, under eyes, 
and like brow like right in that center and sometimes a little bit out here or a lot depending on the day for blending i'm going to use my finger for this side of the face and the zoeva brush for this side of the face So you might be able to notice that the time it took me to blend out the other side of my face made this side dry down a little more. So what ended up happening is that I have more of like spot placement on the side of my face, whereas I feel like this side, I like it blended more into almost a, a very lightweight foundation. But that also is probably to do with the glow lust on this side because it keeps the, the skin a little bit more emollient. I feel like it went further. Whereas here, uh, my skin underneath doesn't feel dry. It still has that like plumpness to skincare, but I don't feel like it traveled as much, which is totally fine. It also, I, I did it maybe in not the best order because I could have done this side first. And you might be thinking, why didn't you just grab a bigger brush if you're gonna apply it like foundation? If I'm already using this brush because it's my perfect under eye brush, then I'm, I'm not really gonna bother with grabbing another brush. Now, if I had used a brush to put down a base product, totally. But this is basically the base product. This is the Auric Glow Lust side. Excuse the little pimple that is healing, open and healing, whatever. Excuse that. Let's blend that out a little more. That is the concealer application. 
here's the thing about this concealer. It is incredibly lightweight to me. And that is what is making it a standout for me. I love a huge amount of concealers in an array of textures from the thicker, higher impact Pat McGrath to the thinner, more shearable Rare Beauty and Flower Beauty Light Illusion concealers to the really whipped, creamy Oma Beauty concealer and the even the e.l.f. Hydrating Camo concealer to the emollient and kind of whipped uh, Rose Ink Concealer, the high impact, but very emollient concealer. There's probably other ones that I've talked about on this channel that I also love. There's something about the way this has a thinness, but still coverage, but also, in my opinion, a bit of luminosity. Like, yes, to me, this under eye has more shine to it because of the glow lust, but even without the glow lust, I think the formula still gives you a little bit of reflection and radiance. And I really like that because of the shape of my face. So like, even on this side, I feel like, you know, at some angles for me and my high critical, like look at things, I can still see the bags, but because the color and the reflection really like creates light on my face, then it's doesn't, it doesn't bother me. And this side to me is much more subtle, but it still has a little bit of radiance. And I guess I will say, Shout out to my friend Thorne, who mentioned bringing highlighter or illuminator all the way under your eye, especially if you wear glasses and you have deeper set eyes. That's, that's the, that's the takeaway. But I feel like on this side, it still gives some, um, I wouldn't say as much reflection but to me, it just looks, it doesn't look matte, but it also doesn't look too dewy or too like glowy in my opinion. And I think on days when I come in with my skincare more like a little more freshly applied, I find this concealer behaves a, even more like radiant without, it's not sparkly in any way. So I'm a fan. I'm sure that the luxuriousness of this whole experience is a bias for me, but you see it on my skin close up. I don't feel like it looks too dry or too heavy. Um, it, I feel like it's sitting well on my nose. I feel like it works under my eyes and also on my face. I think especially if I were wearing like a base underneath, I think the color difference wouldn't be as drastic, but it is why I tend to use it kind of as a base. So I have been really enjoying it. I like blending out with my fingers. I like blending out with a brush. There is a convenience to the, this brush. I do think that actually also the warmth of my fingers mixed with the glow lust might be a reason why this side looks even more luminous. But also for me, reviews and products that I love are about how they wear with other things I already love. So again, this is me and my imposter syndrome with uh, application review videos. So that's why I'm, I'm explaining myself, uh, probably a lot. So let's, let's apply this Dior powder, no powder. So I've used this a couple of times, more than a couple of times. I've used it a couple of times on camera or talked about it. Um, my dear friend Yolanda is the one who recommended this powder to me. And for her, I don't know what's going on outside. For Yolanda, her ideal way to apply it was to apply with a sponge and then buff in with a brush. So the times that I've used this product since I've had it, I have applied it with a dampened drench sponge and then buffed out with this brush or I have just tried to apply and buff with this brush. 
This drench sponge, it's not one of those microfiber or velvety sponges, but it is a more velvety texture than the Shop Miss A Papa sponge. Now this is a hydrated sponge, so I mean, there's a difference there, but I just remembered I have this sponge. So I think today what I'm gonna do is on this half of my face, I'm going to apply it with the sponge and buff out. And on this half of my face, I'm gonna go in with just the brush. And I also have not tried it with a natural hair brush like the Refer 22. So I'm going to use this brush either on both sides of the face or one side. We shall see, I will let you know. This sponge, it's been a while since I've used it and I've gotten used to this sponge, which is a quite nice sponge. So this one feels very damp to me, but I've been squeezing it in a towel. So I, I hope that's not a concern when applying this powder. We're just gonna hope for the best. And then you will know, because to me, this is more of the texture of a beauty blender, of that kind of sponge. Okay, so because this, this side of my face is a little bit less emollient, that's why I'm using the sponge on this side, because it will have some moisture to it. I went into the pan again and picked up more. And basically I just pounce it on more to the center of my face. Now this brush has been used in the past, but I picked up no product. So just to show you, this, this side of my face has powder, and this side does not. Powder, no powder. something completely different. I have this fresh, clean Refer 22, and I'm gonna go into this with the powder. I'm not gonna do the sponge first. I have literally never done this. I've used the synthetic, synthetic hairbrush and the powder first, but never the natural hair. So let me know, do you see a difference? What do you think about the powder application? For me, I'm really enjoying this powder. Now, as you can see, I mainly apply it to my T-zone. I don't actually even, I don't put it on my under eyes. And oftentimes I will put it to, actually I am gonna put it down here. I do like having this area of my face just a little less tacky.
And if you were to go in with a little bit of a heavier hand than myself, uh, over like, and especially over less dewy skin, this powder gets like a velvety feel. Like I feel that more on my forehead, whereas I think where I had perhaps a little more skincare and the glow lust. Yeah, no, on this side of my face, it's not like solid velvet, but it is a little bit velvety. On this side of my face, I could still powder more probably because I still have a little bit of the tact of glow lust coming through. So I use this on my T-zone. I use this on my forehead. I like using it before I go in with highlighter and blush, but sometimes I will go in after with the powder and, and I will also, sometimes it like, it helps kind of seamlessly blend my skin to the blush because the thing that this powder does nicely, in my opinion, is pore blurring. Like my pores are definitely still here, but in my like being critical about my face, blah, 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 I think that it does help. Do I need this powder? Currently, no. My thoughts are currently, no. Do I like it? And do I appreciate having it in my collection? Yes. And do I think it makes, it can make us like a nice powder foundation? Yes. Like, I think that if you wanted to apply it first and then do blush and bronzer and stuff on top of it, I think that would work nicely. I still don't, I don't put it in the areas where I'm going to put what usually are powder products, my highlighter and my blush, because I, I don't want to overkill. Uh, and I would rather kind of spot use it. But I have also put it on after I have con or highlighted and blushed and still like just pinpoint in these areas and it works nicely. I just like not having to worry about like if I do travel into those areas. But like, yeah, I really enjoy it. Um, I like how it picks up on a natural hairbrush. I like how it picks up on a synthetic hairbrush. But I do have to say, I think that going in with a just barely dampen, like dampen your sponge and wring it out as much as you can, going in first and pouncing it on your face where you want like the most kind of impact and then doing a little buffing is a really nice finish. And I know a lot of you might think that's a really particular amount of work to do for a powder. And I agree. But there are times in my routine where I enjoy a particular process. And there are times when I don't. I'm not going to say that this, I don't consider this as like a, a grab and go easy product yet. As I use it more, that might change. This product though, I do think of as a grab and go easy product. I'm really enjoying this concealer under my eyes, on my face, using it as kind of like a base. Like I said, it has a thinness to it that is really nice without being too sheer or too, yeah, too like low coverage. It works for me. I will say, I think both of these products oxidize a little bit. They do for me, I think, deepen up just a, a, a little bit. And you might be able to see that on camera. You might not, but I have been enjoying it. It's a nice, like, you know, luxurious part of my routine. And I think that if you are looking for any of the considerations that I put out there, any of the characteristics I described, uh, you might enjoy these products. Get them on sale. If you're going to get them, get them on sale. Whatever sale is happening, get them on sale. But also don't feel like you have to buy bougie makeup. You know, I have budget favorites. I have mid-range favorites. I have high-end favorites. If you search my site, my, my site, my channel, you will find them all. Um, but for me, I feel very happy with my purchases and I will be curious to see my thoughts on both products as time evolves, but I don't feel like I'm making this review too preemptive or too early in owning them to have some pretty like 
well confirmed thoughts currently. So if you own either of these or both of them and you have any thoughts or any you know, tips or pointers, definitely leave in the comments, not just for me, but for anyone else that might be looking at picking either one of these up. Um, I'm always happy to hear from you. Or if you have just any powder or concealer tricks in general, it doesn't have to be fancy makeup. We're just having a fancy moment right now. If you enjoyed this video, I would love for you to subscribe, perhaps join my Patreon or YouTube membership. Thank you so much to all my patrons and members. I appreciate you so, so much. And, uh, I will be back soon with something else definitely more colorful than this and hopefully I'll see you then. But most importantly, and I did almost forget, don't forget to take care of yourself better today than you did yesterday because you are worth it. Bye friends.